Hi, it's Mike Pangia, and today we're going to make that perennial American favorite cornbread, particularly favored in the South and particularly in the Southwest, where it has been made for generations and perfected to a point that it's really something special. Here are the ingredients I use to make cornbread. Start by melting a stick of butter that's about 110 grams in a 9-inch cast iron skillet. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, use a baking dish, a square, a 9-inch square or a 9-inch round oven-proof baking dish. Prepare the add-ins for your cornbread by slicing up one medium-sized jalapeno into thin slices and preparing about a cup to a cup and a half of corn kernels. We're gonna start with 120 grams of flour. Of course, I use my kitchen scale. That's going to be about a cup. Uh, went a little over 134, 24, 120. Good job. And we need also 120 grams, which is also a cup of the yellow cornmeal. At this point, you could put in a tablespoon of sugar, but since I'm going for savory, I'm going to skip that. We need baking powder. Oh, let's see how much. Two teaspoons of baking powder. a teaspoon of salt. And I dropped a little, so let's make up for it. Okay, there we go. Now, we're going to whisk this all together. That's one and a half cups, which is 355 milliliters, which is 355 grams on the scale. So, for the buttermilk. Uh, 
275. Okay. Not much we can do about that, so we're going to let it stand at 375 and two large eggs. Without the shells, I guess we can do that. scale anymore. We'll stir it all up. Right here in this video, there should be a picture of me pouring the slightly cooled melted butter into the batter. There is not. Now I don't have an excuse, but I do have an explanation. I recently got a generous gift from my son's father-in-law, Alex, a GoPro camera, which is a pretty neat device. Now, I'm not gonna blame the GoPro camera because it's a great little invention and it works fine. It was my problem, not the camera's problem, that caused me to miss this shot. What happened, I had set it up as a still shot when I really needed it as a video and Meanwhile, I'm cooking, I'm mixing all the stuff, so I really couldn't go back. You just have to take my word for it. At this point, add the slightly cooled melted butter to the batter and you'll be fine. And thanks, Alex, I appreciate your generous gift. After you've poured the slightly cooled melted butter into the batter, put your pan back in the oven to get it extra hot before you put the batter in. Also twirl the remaining butter around so the sides of the pan are coated. Now we can put the batter in the pan. and top it with the corn kernels that we prepared. And the jalapenos, thin sliced jalapenos. Then we'll put the whole thing in the oven for about 22 minutes and let her rip. It's been about 25 minutes and I can see the top of our cornbread is toasting a little bit, just how I like it. Now the trick is to see if it'll come out of the pan clean. Oh yes, beautiful. There it is, our lovely cornbread. There we have it, a really useful side to just about any lunch or dinner, cornbread. Now, there is some hostility between the northern version and the southern version. Northerners look at typical southern cornbread as too crumbly and, and doesn't have the consistency of a piece of bread or a piece of cake. Southerners used to their Southern cornbread look at the Yankee cornbread as corn cake. It's got the sugar, it's sweet, it's, it's strange to them and it's not something they're interested in. So here's what I've done. I've eliminated the crumbliness of the Southern cornbread by adding more flour to the cornmeal as well as eggs and that gives it more structure. I don't use the sugar like the sweet cornbread or 
corn cake version that's popular in the north. I make a savory version. In fact, it's very savory with the addition of the jalapenos. It is spicy, spicy. So if your family or friends don't like spicy at all, this might not be for you. Or you could cut down on the jalapenos, put less than one big jalapeno sliced up in there, and that might work for you. Okay, enough on the cornbread. You've seen it. I hope you'll make it, you'll eat it. Now just answer me this one question. If you're watching my videos and you like them, why haven't you subscribed? If you have subscribed, of course, thank you. But YouTube gives me a statistic that says over 80% of people that view my videos are not subscribers. How can that be? That doesn't seem fair, it doesn't seem right. So if that's you, please subscribe. If you like, you can give me a like, a thumbs up. Don't lie, if you don't like it, don't do it. Give me a thumbs down if that's your preference. But you can show your support with a thumbs up. More importantly, with subscribing. More importantly than that, with hitting the share button and sharing this video with someone that you think might be interested. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.